And now, the Mole Mystery Theater, presented by M O L L E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins. <laughs> Good evening. This is Jeffrey Barnes welcoming you to the Mole Mystery Theater, the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Tonight's story is entitled Goodbye, Darling, and was written by Hank Warner. Ed Begley, recently seen in the motion picture Boomerang and star of the Broadway hit play All My Sons, plays the leading role, and Elspeth Eric and Chuck Webster are featured. Goodbye, Darling is a story that starts with cold-blooded plotting of murder and unfolds into a battle of wits between intended victim and his would-be murderers. It's the kind of story that'll make you wish you could do something to help. Well, you know, Mr. Barnes, that's exactly how I feel when I see a man trying to shave tough whiskers or a tender skin, because sometimes he really needs help. Well, men, that's the time when your best friend is Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Yes, sir, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Try it. Mole. And now for tonight's Mole mystery, Goodbye, Darling, starring Ed Begley. It is Saturday afternoon. Cruising in a car on a suburban highway are Curtis Tabor at the wheel and Mrs. Lily Lucas discussing the details of a plot. Your husband home? I'm not sure, Kurt. You better not take a chance. Let me out at the traffic light. You think you'll tumble? Don't you worry. You leave that to me. You'll phone me, Lily. Yes, and you come out first thing Sunday morning. Yeah. That it, uh... Up the hill? Mm-hmm. Better stop here. Oh. Just send the ad in to the Times Herald? Of course. Last Saturday. They'll print it tomorrow. Yeah, but your he husband... He doesn't know yet. I'll sell him the idea tonight. Uh-huh. And what a little salesman. And I can pretend to telephone about placing the ad. You beautiful oh. devil, you. Be careful. I'm not here. <laughs> you sure know how. i better go now. You turn off here and I'll walk out. Bye. Goodbye, darling. <laughs> You devil, you. That you, Lily? Yes, George. Some letters for you. I didn't know the mail had come. More bills, I guess. Mm, circulars, appeals for funds. George, didn't you mail last month's payment on the mortgage? Here's another letter from the bank. Guess I'll have to get another loan on my insurance. You better do something. Did you get a lift from the station? I saw you getting out of the car at the light. What of it? Nothing. I only thought... I know what you thought. Oh, Lily, please. The bus was late. No taxi. Mr. Birch's, something like that, lives near the bay. You know, if you hadn't sold the car, you could have picked me up. Oh, Lily. You and your silly jealousy. Oh, really, dear, I didn't mean anything. I just happened to be looking out the window. Forgive me, Lily. Darling. Oh, George, please. I'm sorry, dear. The insurance money's in my bag. You wonderful, darling. That's the end of my savings account. You know what? Sometimes I think it was a mistake to put all the insurance Henry left me into this house. Here I am, living in the house the money Henry's death brought. I should have gone with him that night. I'll never get over the feeling that I sent him to his death. Oh, now we're grown up, George. It couldn't be helped. I've asked you please not to talk about it. Oh, say, maybe that opening in the Times Herald promotion department will pan out. Conley said he'd give me an interview next Saturday, but I'm afraid he didn't sound too keen about it. George. Kiss me. Oh. 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 
love me? Mm-hmm. You know, Lily, I, I've been thinking. Your idea of renting one of our rooms. Are you sure it's all right? Well, why not? After all, many people do. Oh, well, you've been so opposed to it, I was afraid to mention it again. <laughs> You're a dear, George. I better get dinner, darling. I'll fix a fire in the fireplace. Good. There's a few logs left. Mm -hmm. Why don't you phone that ad in, Lily? Time to catch tomorrow's paper. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, Pennsylvania 6, 6, 600. Pennsylvania 6, 6, 600. Right. Number, please. Operator, uh, Pennsylvania 6, 5097. Hello. Lily. I'd like to place an ad in Sunday's paper. Room for rent. Yeah, all set. Furnished, garage, private family. Name is Lucas. Uh, Lily, do you want to go shh, for... Shh, shh, shh. Oh, you're fixing the ad? 11 Beechwood Road, Glencrest. What's wrong, honey? Little Georgie there? Yes. Uh, one time, tomorrow. Tomorrow's paper, right? That's right. One time, tomorrow. Good. Thank you. I don't think there'll be any trouble renting that room, Lily. No, George. I'm sure there won't. It's more coffee? No, thanks. What's the paper say about the weather? Sunday, mild, probably showers. Oh, did they print our ad? Uh huh. Here it is. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Where are you going? Garage. I ought to start overhauling that outboard motor. Yeah, I'll pick up the dishes. You might get some early callers on that ad. Mm -hmm. Curtis. Oh, good morning. How do you do? I'm interested in the room you advertised in Times Herald this morning. <laughs> Where is he? I'll show you the room. This way, please. It's on the ground floor. Swell room, honey. Oh, careful, Kurt. Please. please. Um, the garage is attached. This way. George! George, turn off that outboard motor. This gentleman's here about the room. Oh, yes. Oh, good morning. Uh, this is my husband, Mr... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Tabor, How Curtis do do? Tabor. You know my card? Oh, Acme Motor Sales. Any being delivered these days? Mr. Tabor likes the room. Uh, I see you have your workshop here in the garage. Uh, won't my car be in the way? Oh, no, no. As a matter of fact, I've been planning to move my stuff into the cellar. Got other machine tools there. And I'll I... show Mr. Tabor the grounds, George. Okay, honey. Out this way, Mr. Tabor. Uh, well... Nice garden. It's lovely in the summer. We often dine out on this terrace. <laughs> Suits me. <laughs> this driveway's perfect. Wide enough to back into without any trouble. When would you care to move in, Mr. Tabor? Oh, in a few days. Don't forget to go to the Motor Vehicle Bureau tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Get your learner's permit so I can start giving you driving lessons. Mm -hmm. It's got to look like an accident, Lily. Like an accident. <laughs> In Act One of tonight's Molde Mystery, we've seen how the bold plan for murdering Mr. Lucas gets started. In Act Two, we'll see whether murder comes so easy. Uh, say, Dan, what's your observation on this subject? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Barnes, real murder is a little out of my line. But shaving murder, now, there's something that comes all too easy to some men. You know, fellas with tough whiskers or a tender skin. So I say to them, shave with Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Because Mole is heavier, it not only softens your whiskers, it stands them up straight and lets your razor mow them down in a hurry. With Mole, you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly. Try it. See if you don't say it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole. The heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. 
And now back to Jeffrey Barnes and Act Two of Goodbye, Darling. It is Saturday morning, just one week since George and Lily Lucas rented a room in their suburban house to Curtis Tabor, who, with Mrs. Lucas, is plotting the accidental death of Mr. Lucas. Unsuspecting, Mr. Lucas has left for the city to be interviewed for a position in the promotion department of the Times-Herald. In the meantime... Come on, get in, Lily. Give me your first lesson. Baby. No, please, Kurt. Not out here. Okay. <laughs> know what George said when I drove him to the station? Hmm? <laughs> said he'd hate to be hit with his car. You don't think he suspected No, it. no, no, no. He was thinking of a collision. Hmm. It's going to be easy, like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> Too bad he's only carrying $25,000 worth of insurance. Mm. Now, look, pay attention. This is ignition key. Mm. I turn it. Yeah. Now, step on the starter. Right here. <laughs> Simple. Now, shut off the ignition. Now, step on the starter. You hear that? It won't start with ignition off, but it sounds like the battery could be run down a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll have the car backed into the garage. You'll be at the wheel. Yep. I'll ask George to help me shove the car for a start. When he's between the wall and the rear bumper, you sneak the ignition on like this. Mm -hmm. Shift into reverse like this. And step hard on the starter, making the car jump back like this. Oh! George will be crushed against the wall. I see. Now let's rehearse it until it's perfect. It's got to be perfect. Hello, Frank. Well, George, you working here now? For the Times Herald? Oh, not yet, but I've just been upstairs to see Conley in the promotion department. Connect? Oh, he says he'll think it over. Oh, well, how about a drink? I don't know. I've got some shopping. And I'd like to place a situation wanted to add in the Sunday paper just in case. Well, I gotta pick up some reservations at Grand Central. Meet me in half an hour at the men's bar. Cheer up, you mug. See you in a little while. Okay. Uh... Miss, is this the window for situations wanted? Yes. Here, I want to place this ad for Sunday. Six, 11, 12, 18. That'll be three lines, dollar 23. Out of five, 25, 50, three, four, five. Your receipt, thank you. Oh, uh, I might as well pay for a room to rent ad we ran last Sunday. L A L I L U. Don't see any bill under Lucas. Maybe it's been paid. No, I don't think so. It just phoned in. I'll look at the paid bills. L A L O. Lucas. It has been paid. Cash with order. Are you sure it was phoned in? Not according to this duplicate. There's the date stamp. Paid Saturday, April 26th, 6 15 p.m. Saturday, April 26th, but. Why, that was a week before she phoned it in. Frank, this one's on me. Well, here's to you and Lily. Oh, what's the matter, George? To you and Lily. Didn't you hear me? Hey, where, where are you going? Well, back in a minute. I got to make a call. Operator, business office at Glencrest, please. Hello? I want to check the extra charge calls in our current bill, but only the calls made on Saturday, July 26th. Lucas, George Lucas, Glencrest 2481. 
Oh, well, wait a minute. I get a pencil. Okay. Uh, Lackawanna, four, eight, seven. Uh, right. Pennsylvania, six, three, five. Uh-huh. Pennsylvania, six, five, oh, nine, seven. Only three calls on July 26th. Are you sure? Oh, thank you. Not going now. Four, eight, seven. Real department store. Never mind. Pennsylvania. Six, three, five. Uh, sorry, wrong number. Pennsylvania. Six. Five. Oh. Nine. Seven. What number are you calling? No, uh, Pennsylvania. Six. Five. Oh. Nine. Seven. Operator. Curtis Tabor. That number has been disconnected. Curtis Tabor. Hello? Hello? I said that number has been disconnected. Hey, George, you were gone so long I came after you. Now, let's have some more drinks, huh? huh? Oh, sure. Let's have some more drinks. Let's have lots more drinks. <laughs> Gusty. Put him on the bed, Kurt. I never saw him as drunk as this. For a nice package. <laughs> Lily. Hmm? Good thrown down the steps. Broken neck. Accident on the scatter rug you placed there. Don't be a fool. A cabbie saw us carry him upstairs. Come on, help me get some of this clothes. All right. See what I mean, Frank? Two timers. Who's this Frank? Oh, how do I know? My fool, Frank. I should have gone with Henry. I knew Henry was too drunk to drive. But Lily grabbed me, kissed me, and I let Henry go. He was killed. She made me do it. Oh. Who's this Henry? My first husband. What about it? I see. You're not an amateur at getting rid of husbands. <laughs> You'll get another chance. Tomorrow. Morning. That's it, Lily. I'll be back from the drugstore any minute. But wait for my nod. I'll be back there with him, and I don't want to be caught between the rear bumper and that wall. It's for dear George, remember? Hands. <laughs> get set. Here he comes. Oh, George, you mind helping me shove the car? The battery's run down. Just thought I'd give Lily another lesson today. Sounded all right to me. Yeah, I know, but it won't start. Come on back here and help me shovel, yeah. All right, put it in second, Lily, and keep your foot on the clutch. You all set? Yep. Okay, George, come on, now help me shove. That's the boy. Sure is a load. Get out of it. No! <laughs> Lily, you bungled it. You waited too long after my nod. Swell job. Just broke his leg. Oh, hello, 
George. How's the leg feeling? Not too bad. Doc says I'll be off these crutches another week or so. Oh, I'm sorry about it, George. Sorry? What for? It was an accident. These things happen. The way I figure it, when fate gives you the nod. What? It's simple. The nod was for me that day. Looks like I got another chance. Doesn't it? <laughs> Anything I can get you in town? No, thanks. Oh, uh, I wonder, would you do me a favor? Get that outboard motor hooked over that barrel of water. Oh, sure, gladly. Ooh, pretty heavy motor, huh? <laughs> Thanks. I think it needs some carburetor adjustment. You want me to start it? Oh, I can manage that. Needs a tuning. Well, it'll give me something to do. George, isn't it dangerous running this motor down here? Fumes from the exhaust. Well, there's an exhaust fan in that corner window just behind that bin. Oh, do you mind turning it on, Kurt? No, no, not at all. A drink? Oh, no, thanks. No, no. George, you mind if I say something that's probably not any of my business? Go ahead. It's about your hitting the bottle since you got out of the hospital, George. Let me be the judge of that. I'm sorry. Shouldn't have mentioned it, I guess. <laughs> sorry. Uh... I'm taking Lily out for another driving lesson. Uh, that okay with you? And if it weren't? Well, just thought you might like to join us. No, thanks. Okay, we won't be gone long. That's what you think. Now step hard on the gas for that hill, Lily. All right. <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> so you're getting to be a pretty good driver, <laughs> huh? <laughs> sure is a lovely view from up top here. <laughs> now take it easy going down. Crossroad ahead. Mm -hmm. Get your hey, foot off the gas. My foot is off the gas. The brake's gone. Grab the handbrake. It won't hold. Let me have that wheel. Keep your hand on the horn. <laughs> Okay. Now we'll lose our speed going up the next hill. Okay. Now quick, shift into low. That'll hold it from coasting back. Oh. That was close. Holy man. Lily, I wonder. Huh? I saw George fussing around the car this morning. Huh? Sister, your loving husband's wise to us. Those brakes were okay last night. What are you going to do about it? What I told you as soon as we get back. We'll get him started on a bottle in the cellar and have a couple with him to make it look good. Then when he's passed out, start the outboard motor. It'll look like he forgot to turn on the ventilating fan. <laughs> This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of Goodbye, Darling. Now a word from George Putnam. Every day, more and more people are discovering that to get real relief from the most common kind of dandruff, they must destroy the germ called Pity Rosporum ovale, which many outstanding authorities say is its cause. You see, merely washing or brushing away loose dandruff has no effect whatsoever on this germ. But one thing that does work is double dandrine. For double dandrine actually kills this germ on contact. Even in severe cases, results with double dandrine have been amazing. And the reason for double dandrine's astonishing effectiveness is a special ingredient, an active antiseptic so remarkably efficient many hospitals use it. In double dandrine, we call it Alzan. So stop trying to combat this dandruff with ineffective methods that actually are no better than plain water. They can't compare with double dandrine, for double dandrine destroys the cause. If you're not completely satisfied, you'll get your money back. Get double dandrine tomorrow. Why do we have to sit in the car? This garage is too hot. Let's wait in the house. No. 
Oh, I better sit here where we can hear that outboard motor. It might cut off. It'll be over soon. I shouldn't have had that drink. I feel sleepy. I only had a couple. I feel drowsy myself. Uh, let's get some air. Kurt, I'm sick. Lily. Where are you? I can't move. Lily. Kurt. Uh, he drinks. Lily. Lily, we've been drugged. George, he did it. Let's get out. Wheel, darling wife. <laughs> have a long sleep, lovers. Lily, why did you have to do it? Goodbye, darling. to the sleeping pills upstairs in the medicine cabinet. I must get rid of them. Two we found in the car, Doc? No, I'm afraid not. Full motors won't help them now, Inspector. Okay, boys. What about Mr. Lucas, Inspector? Oh, didn't you know? Neck's broken. Too bad. He probably could have saved them if he hadn't slipped on that scatter rug. <laughs> Now, this is Jeffrey Barnes again, bringing down the final curtain on tonight's Mystery Theater presentation of Goodbye, Darling. The original music for the Mystery Theater is composed and conducted by Alexander Sembler. Any resemblance between the names and characters used on the Mystery Theater and any actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> Sometimes when we're tired, we make mountains out of molehills. We putter around till even the easiest job seems impossible. Now, if you're that tired and pale besides, your doctor may find you have a borderline anemia, resulting from a ferronutritional blood deficiency. Then you need ironized yeast tablets. They help build up your strength by building up your red blood cells. So take ironized yeast tablets to get back your color, your vigor, your driving energy. Ironized yeast tablets. And now this is Dan Seymour again saying good night until next week at this same time when the Mystery Theater presents A Lease on Death. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. 